Today we're going to be talking about understanding relations and functions. So there's a subtle difference between relations and functions, and that's what we're going to be exploring. Um, let's go ahead and start with a set of numbers. I have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 1, 2. My x values, that would be these four, my x values and my coordinate, those are often referred to as inputs. That is what I put into my equation, um, into my function, or into my relation. The y values, the y coordinates, are what I get out of whatever the relation or function is. So those are my output values. And together, the pairing of those two quantities as ordered pairs are called relations. Now, you can take a look at relations using mapping diagrams, and this often helps to see how one number relates to another. So I'm going to go ahead and start again with my 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 2, and put that out in a map, and you could see the connections between my input values over here and my output values. You can see how 0 gives me three separate outputs and one just gives me one the number one gives me one single output so there are four different types of relations that we're gonna go over the first relation is a one-to-one -one relation in a one-to-one -one relation each input is mapped onto only one output and in this case, you could see that the inputs and outputs don't really have to be numbers. The inputs can be letters, the inputs can be words, the outputs are numbers. That's a one-to-one -one relation. This next example is a one-to-many relation. In this instance, one input is mapped onto many outputs. So we have another example here. This is known as a many-to-one relation. Many inputs are mapped onto one output. And in our fourth example here, we have a many-to-many -many relation. One input is mapped onto many outputs, and also one output is related to many inputs. So there's all sorts of crazy going on over here in this, uh, in this example. Now let's see how relations relate to functions. Something important, all functions are relations but not all relations are functions. Here's why. A function is a type of relation that assigns exactly one output to each input. So you can only have one output assigned for each input. Let's take a look at some, some examples. So, this first example is a one-to-one -one relationship, or is a one-to-one -one function. In this case, when I press the letter A on a keyboard, the letter on the screen shows up as also A. Same with B, same with Z. It's a one-to-one -one relation, but it's also a function. Again, because there's only exactly one output to each input. In this case, you might think that it's a relation. Well, it is, but it's also specifically a function. Larry, Mo, and Curly each scored a 49 on their last science test. And then my last example here is a many-to-one relationship. We have three different players and at one point in time they could each play a different position. Uh, Christy could play guard or he could play forward. He's not going to play them at the same time but he has the ability to play them. Weber could play forward, he could play center. Stoyakovic put, could play forward. Obviously they can't all do that at the same time, but this works as a many-to-one function. Each input will produce exactly one output, so all three of these examples of relationships, of relations, they are all functions. The challenge will be to see the difference between relations and functions and then we will be discussing these values algebraically in the future. Now, when it comes to functions, you can identify what they look like graphically by using something called the vertical line test. 
each function has some sort of graph, is represented by some sort of graph. Now, what you can do is you could take a pencil, or in this case, a handy vertical line, and you could see that regardless of where I move this line on my graph, there's only, it only hits the graph in one point. Right there, for example. Then if I move it over here, it only touches the graph at one point right there. Um, if we take a look at another graph of a function, I'm going to go ahead and move this vertical line and I can test it over here and I see it only overlaps in one coordinate. If I keep moving the line, it's only touching at one coordinate. If I take a look at another example of a function, Again, regardless of where I move this vertical line, it is only touching the graph in one spot. Well, what, how about an example of something that is not a function using the vertical line test? Let's take a look at this graph down here. With the vertical line, you'll see once I run it over the graph, the vertical line crosses the graph in two points that makes it not a function. Also, if I take a look at this next graph, oh, alright, that's definitely not a function. We can see that it crosses the graph in many different spots. Again, there we could see that it is not a function. So the vertical line test helps to identify whether graphs represent functions or not.